Hey guys, welcome to the COVID Cocktail Club. Happy Thursday. I hope it's a happy Thursday for all of you guys out there. Hope you enjoyed making Manhattans and maybe some Black Manhattans yesterday. Today we're going to get off sort of the, the boozier cocktail and get into something that's very light uh, and very, uh, I'd say, appropriate for this heat we're seeing out here, at least in Texas. Uh, it is a classic cocktail that some of you may have had some bad experiences with in the past, and that is a gin and tonic. Um, as I think I mentioned yesterday, you know, a lot of us think of gin and tonics as that really crappy, let's just say it, shitty tonic water we used to drink back in the day, back in college, or in restaurants, so they would use the soda gun and use the tonic water. Uh, this is as far from that as, as possible. And in fact, this is the one drink I would say when I first got into cocktails a few years ago that I would start making, and I'd have friends come over, they'd say, oh, I hate gin and tonics, and I would just say, trust me, try this one gin and tonic. And I'd say nine times out of 10, they'd be amazed that it was a gin and tonic, and it was so different from what they were used to. So I can assure you that if you don't like gin and tonics already, you're gonna love these. Uh, today we're actually going to experience in two different versions each to show you, you know, the variety you can do, again, bringing kitchen to bar. Um, but before we get into that, just a couple things on the gin and tonic. Um, that bitter taste that you guys recall from, from years past, that's actually the quinine that's in the tonic water. And in most of the more basic and, and sort of, you know, lower end tonic waters that we used to drink and maybe still have out there today, they're using actually a quinine syrup versus actual quinine. And quinine actually comes from the, uh, the chin, the cinch cinchona bark, couldn't get that one very clear. Say that three cinchona, times fast. Yes, cinchona bark, or from the cinchona tree, uh, and it was actually used back in the day, they would actually make the tonic water with, with the uh, quinine to fight malaria. So I kind of find it appropriate in today's uh, situation that we're dealing with right now, maybe enough yeah. out there. I mean, anti-malaria stuff is all the rage right now. Yes. So, we're so trendy. So yeah, we're ahead of the trend. So. <laughs> so like Jason's saying, this is a super easy cocktail with just two ingredients, really, but there are so many ways to elevate this to, to a not-so-basic cocktail. Um, the first one, obviously, is, is your choice of gin. Um, you could use a super basic gin, um, or you could get, you know, um, there are all sorts of flavored gins and infused gins and uh, very juniper-forward, you know, London dry gins versus um, florally gins. So, we brought out a few just to show you guys. Um, the Citadel we've used before, but he's a really mild gin that, that mixes well and plays nicely with others. And, and I'm gonna use him today because I really like him. Uh, this Brockman's gin, um, I don't think you can actually get it in Houston. Thank you, Robin. Um, my sister-in-law in New, in New Jersey sent me this bottle. It is a berry gin and he's really fun. And I'll be using him later today with some, um, in, in one of my recipes that I'm going to use uh, with raspberries, actually, and a few other ingredients. Um, there's your Tanqueray. It's just a standard London dry that um, I know my husband will say is hands down the best gin ever, and, and will always go to that one. Hendrix, a lot of you guys are familiar with and like. He's infused with rose and cucumber, so he also plays nicely in a gin and tonic. You get some fancy colors. The Empress is purple. This I'm not sure how I got him. I ordinarily wouldn't buy him on my own, but he's pink, so that's fun, I suppose. Um, you know, so so you can get fun with your gins. Um, also, you can really go to town with your tonics. Like you know, uh, Jason was saying, um, we're not going to use bad tonic today because we don't believe in it. I've got a couple out here. I've got some um, Fever Tree Mediterranean. This is hands down my favorite. Um, Jason, I don't even know what he really tastes like. What would you say? He's, he's just delicious, but. It's, it's very, uh, I'd say botanical forward. It's got a little more of a flavor profile than your classic sort of Indian tonics. Uh, that's certainly the one that I alluded to earlier when I was, we actually found the recipe at a cultivari here in Houston. Uh, and in fact, I see the grapefruit on your bar, so I, I, I bet you're going to be going with something very similar to the one they would make. Might that's, be. The one, that's the first one I kind of fell in love with in, in terms of uh, really appreciating a good tonic water. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I also have a, um, another fever tree. This guy actually is pink. I, I hope you can see it. It's an, the aromatic tonic water. Um, I actually picked him up like at Target, I think, on clearance. Um, but he's pink because he's got some Angostura bark in there, that same thing that gives Angostura bitters. It's red color, gives him the pink color and a little bit of flavor as well. Um, so I'm gonna make him with my, my berry gin and tonic and, and get a little bit fun with him. You wanna talk about your tonics? 
Yeah, well, one you already touched on, because I, again, I too love the, the Fever Tree. In fact, one thing I love about Fever Tree, their, their marketing, I want to say it's actually on the label of their package. It says if three quarters of your drink, uh, if, if tonic represents three quarters of your drink, and I'm, not, I'm paraphrasing here, you know, you really want to use the right mixer. So, I mean, it's really, it's, it's kind of oversimplistic, but if you think about it, if three quarters of that cocktail is coming from this bottle, it's really important you get this bottle right. So I would even say if you had to choose between a really good tonic mixed with an okay gin or a super high end gin with a really bad tonic, I would go with the former over the latter. Bryce, would you agree? I would, I would agree. Yeah. The other one, this is kind of a, just a nice, uh, well, this is kind of a neat story. I was just at a local place today, actually called Local Foods here in Houston, uh, owned by a friend of mine, Benji Levitt, and he heard about our gin and tonic class today. And uh, so Benji's is, and Local Foods is sort of our unofficial sponsor today. He actually threw this in today told us to try it. And this is a, an East Imperial tonic water. I've not tried it, so we'll be trying this together, but wanted to thank uh, Benji for that. And also just give him a shout out. You know, th these, these guys are doing a great job. Uh, they're, uh, right now, their restaurant's actually closed, but they're using it as sort of a mini grocery store, and it's really neat. Uh, we found tons of produce, things for the house, like they have gloves there now. I and mean, they're really doing a nice job trying to give back and support not only their restaurant and their employees, but local farmers and purveyors and, and giving people obviously great food out there too. So a big thank you to, to Benji and the guys at Local Foods. Very nice. Okay. Uh, okay. So the, the first one that I'm going to make, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pair the Citadel with the uh, Mediterranean, like Jason alluded to. That's uh, my, my, one of my favorite restaurants in the Heights. They do it this way. And they do it with a beautiful um, grapefruit peel and fresh mint. And they have their own garden um, at the restaurant that they use. And um, I pulled mine from my garden as well. So that'll be fun. Um, and then the second one that I'm going to do is going to be the Brockman's Berry Gin, uh, this aromatic tonic, um, and in keeping with that very sweet, very berry, um, I'm going to use this homemade loquat syrup. Uh, Franny and Kathy, some friends who um, tasked me with figuring out what to do with loquat since they're all over the place. Well, guys, I turned it into a simple syrup. So we're going to see how that plays today in a gin and tonic, even though I wouldn't typically throw it in a gin and tonic, this guy's gonna be a little bit sweeter. Um, I also, now that I'm thinking about it, he'd be really nice in a margarita. So if you will go back and do a repeat margarita over the weekend and you wanna make a simple syrup out of your little quats, I encourage that as well. And I'll pull in some basil from my garden as well with that one. Jason, what are your two variations? Uh, so I'm using a Citadel gin, which I think you alluded to earlier. It's a nice, light, crisp, also really well-priced gin. This is, uh, you know, we mentioned the Espolón being sort of a good house tequila to have. This is a good house gin to have because it really works with everything. Uh, again, using the elderflower, I'm sorry, the Mediterranean fever tree tonic. And now I'm using the fresh basil and juniper berries. So juniper berries obviously are a natural tie-in with, with any gin uh, cocktail. So very pretty, but also uh, fragrant and, and tastes, tastes really good. And then on the other one, I'm using Hendrix, which is more of a cucumber and rose petal forward gin. Uh, really cool bottle. I've always loved this bottle. Yeah. Uh, do, using that East Imperial that I mentioned earlier. And then I'm using uh, fresh strawberries. And I found these today also. These are uh, kiwi, but they're actually baby kiwi. So yeah. anyways, two different, two very different times. Well, we encourage you guys at this point, this is where you can get really creative. This is where you can add cucumbers or, or thyme or oregano or... Um, Jackie, if you've got a plethora of oranges, you can use your orange peel in here. I mean, this is where you can really go wild, get crazy, throw in peppercorns or star anise, or, I mean, really, there's just no limit to, to how crazy you could get with this and, and have a lot of fun. Um, and it really does actually make a difference, I think, in, in your cocktail, what you add to it. So having said that, let's get started. Let's, let's make it. So now we, this is a really easy cocktail to make because we're not gonna shake it or stir it. We're gonna build it right in the glass. So we just started with our ice, two ounces of our gin. There's the Citadel. I'm gonna do this one Spanish style in the balloon glass like they do in Spain. I'm gonna pretend I'm in Spain today. And two ounces of my Brockman's in a, just in a regular highball. Again, no right or wrong way to do this. Okay. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of my low quat syrup, just for funsies. And then, should we garnish it up? Let's garnish it up. Okie dokie. So, I'm doing fresh basil. I know there were some uh, funny comments on the, one of the earlier videos with the spanking of the basil. So yet again, we will uh, open up the oil and the 
the scent of the basil before we put it in. Some juniper berries. No comment. No comments. And then again, the baby kiwi. And some strawberries in the other. I'm gonna use my fancy tongs to do this. Get some mint going in there. You have your handy Y peeler. Got my handy Y peeler. I don't know if you guys can see. I got a lot going on right now. Yeah, I'm getting thirsty over here. <laughs> no, seriously. And my, my grapefruit peel. And now let's, I would have preferred that grapefruit peel to be a little bigger. No comment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, moving on to our tonic. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go one at a time. I'm doing both. I see that. Because I'm fancy. You are, you are very skilled, Jason Lavage. God, these are good. Okay, so these look super different, but both are gin and tonics. Jason's also look, you know, different, but fantastic. There's really no one right way to do this. It's also nice, the very whether you're using a straw or just if you have a bar spoon, you give it one light stir, just to kind of get all the flavors working together. Yeah, that's a good idea. Get the, carbon, get the carbonation out. I do have straws in this case, but they're certainly optional. Especially if you use the syrup, that's a great idea. Right. And, and also, if you want to throw in a little bit of liqueur in there in lieu of the syrup, like a St. Germain or an Italicus, that, that works really nicely in with the gin and tonic, too. All righty. Okay. So your homework for tomorrow is to, whoop, is to get out your gin or your vodka, your dry vermouth, and I may be giving it away by telling you this, but this is when we're going to need your olives and or lemons. And get yourself ready for date night because we've got a nice cocktail for you coming tomorrow. Looking forward to it, guys. All right, enjoy. And are we doing two? I oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't just... think I'm coordinated enough for two. I'm going to give you one. All right, I'm doing two. Ready? Okay. All right. Cheers, Rice. <laughs> Cheers, Jason.